Laura and Justin were asking me earlier how I fell in love with hockey. We we're talking a little bit about my, you know, growing up. First, the first sporting event I ever went to was a Bruins and Capitals game at the old Boston Garden. So, what is it for you? How did you yeah. fall in love with the game? Yeah, my dad was born and raised in Boston, raised us in uh, the Pittsburgh area, uh, Western Pennsylvania, and Eastern Ohio. So it was just it was just part of my upbringing. It was one of the you know like most American kids or football, basketball, baseball. I just you know happened to add hockey to that. I collected hockey cards. You know, played hockey, could skate. Uh, it was just another sport, and uh, and my dad was a sports mad kind of guy, and so yeah, it was. I, I was raised with the game, so at a young age. Yeah, it, it's it's unique. It's interesting the way that you know, for some folks, we grow up. There's four sports, and they are all sort of equivalent. Other folks, it, it's just three. I right. guess sort of depending on where in the country you you grow up. But hockey has a different culture, right? I mean, how how would you describe what makes hockey different? Yeah, it is different. It was always so Canadian for so long, so it was almost like a foreign sport um, from a faraway land. I think kind of like Premier League soccer is for people. They kind of like how that's grown in popularity in the last decade. You know, it's 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 just a different flavor, different culture, uh, the accents, the whole thing, the names, the whole European flair, and the international part of the game. And you know, hockey was like that growing up. It was ninety percent Canadian when I was a kid. And then slowly more Americans, and then a few Czechs and Swedes uh, in the 70s and 80s. And then, of course, the Russian uh, influence with the Russian Five slowly coming over. And then now completely being an international game, the best, you know, hockey league in the world. So, but at first for me, it was just very Canadian. It was, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't on TV a lot. It had a mystery to it. I listened to a lot of games on the radio, so I invented the game in my head. It always had kind of a gothic kind of feel to it to me. A violent blood and these old arenas and organs. It was like church almost. It was like a, a punk rock, gothic, uh, My Chemical Romance video, you know, all turned into one big crock pot. It was kind of weird, but uh, it, it was a little different. And it was that, like I said, that foreign element wasn't accessible. It was kind of, uh, it was kind of out there. And so those who loved it really loved it. And, um, and it was, and so you really felt a bond with, another person once you find out they loved hockey we got john bujagras with me here uh, he'll be doing the play-by-play tonight of the very first game the kraken will ever play that counts which is awesome we're lucky here by the way john forsland uh will be doing the games locally on yeah. the road, and he is a true pro so I, I just i feel so lucky that that we're that people here in seattle are going to get to experience hockey the way it's meant to be and and so we're we're, we're helping to kind of learn as a city what this sport means and when, when we talk about culture Hockey seems to have, as much as any sport, reverence for its own game. The players have reverence and respect. I would say it, it feels like more than any other sport. Yeah, it, it's a game built on sacrifice, and it's always been part of the ethic. You know, the, the especially like I said, coming from Canada and kind of hard living up there in the uh, you know early 20th century, mid 20th century. You know, lot, not a lot of wealth in the world at that time, and life was difficult and on farms and small towns and. And uh, nothing was handed to you. It was a big sacrifice just to go out and play in cold weather, to tie skates, to have your parents take you to the rink. It's a lot of sacrifice involved. And so I think kids see a lot of that sacrifice at a young age. Um, it is a sport that requires a lot of times a couple of parents, you know, to, to take you to the rink and the sacrifice and the, any extra money they give it to you and um, so you can play hockey for your skates and your equipment. So they see that sacrifice. It's kind of uh, unspoken. They see it and, and they kind of, use that as a model and they grew up that way so it does take a lot of sacrifice and that's the word i think i, I always come back to with hockey and why people are uh, you know those who love it and those who observe it like that ethic they like that part of the game what do you make of the kraken what do you make of the team yeah i mean it looks good um built from the back end out which i think every team should even like a, like a team like the buffalo sabers they should start over and they should do that they should start with goalies and defensemen and they're kind of doing that they, you know, they drafted owen power out of michigan last year number one they have rasmus Dahlin. they should keep on that track and that's what the kraken's plan was get two good goalies they have you know they have one of the best goalie tandems in all the nhl uh get good defensemen back there unfortunately some hit with the COVID. uh up tonight won't be there but to have good big sturdy defensemen um, who can get the puck out and then just good all around 200 foot forwards it's you know will they score enough will someone pop that's like vegas popped a couple 
you know, four years ago, and William Carlson went from eight goals to 41, and Eric Halla had uh, led the team with power play goals. You know, can, can Jared McCann be a guy that gets 35 out of nowhere? And, um, you know, Don Scoy and Yarncroke, and they get high 20. So that's what's going to, you know, they need someone to pop offensively that they don't expect.